still part of the work we are doing in CM. This part is WP4, which is about trying to make sense or trying to understand how we can have a clue, at least, on assessing durability for sustainability assessment. This is important. So thanks, Bjorn, for being here. Bjorn Kalman, it's a research director at Payment Technology at the Swedish National Road and Transport Research Institute. Maybe most of you know them as VTI, as I personally do. Um, and Bjorn, without further ado, I will give you the stage and ask people to keep asking questions on the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you see my screen now? Yes, if you can go full screen, it will be better for, for the audience. Uh, full do you see my presentation? Uh, yes, we can see it. Just Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Uh, good morning, or good morning, America, and good day to everyone else. Uh, uh, my name is Bjorn Kahlman, working at VTI, as uh, Davide said. Um, <clears throat> As said in, in previous presentations, uh, the durability is very crucial for, for the life cycle assessment. And uh, it has a direct impact on the uh, imprint you do, uh, the environmental imprint uh, of your road. Uh, I think a natural starting point, let's see here. Uh, Yeah, a natural starting point for a discussion on, on uh, durability is to look at the service lives that you can um, have for a certain type of uh, road material uh, in your country. Uh, here I show you just a hypothetical um, graph of distribution of service lives. Uh, and we can assume here that um, we have uh, selected roads uh, in the same uh, um, traffic uh, class, meaning that they have a, about the same uh, number of um, vehicles per day. And that they have been built uh, with the same um, code, building code. Uh, sometimes it's uh, beneficial to, to model these kinds of distributions. And uh, then I would like you to um, I remind you that it's very important that uh, you also include the, the road sections that has survived the present day, because otherwise you will um, end up with a model that um, um, give you an unexpected uh, or a very short, uh, shorter um, service lives than uh, what is actually uh, experienced in the field. Uh, so there are statistical models that can handle this kind of sensor data if you need to model this kind of um, distributions. And some obvious observations here. Um, we have um, typical service lives for the, the material. Uh, we have sections with very short service lives. And uh, perhaps we also have uh, sections uh, with longer service lives than others. I think we can learn a lot uh, uh, from all three of these, um, um, this, uh, all three parts here. The next thing you can do is to start to uh, question, uh, questioning the, the x-axis here. Um, you can see I have numbered uh, one, two, three, up to 17 years. And that's how we uh, usually collect the data from uh, the uh, payment management systems and, and databases from the road authorities. But is it really age that we are looking at or is it traffic? Can we put an equal sign between them? Uh, that's important to know. And uh, I think one should uh, look at this uh, for every case. Uh, if it's age, that is important here. Uh, so is it aging and what is aging in this case? 
does roads age as uh, we humans do when we finally end uh, our lives, uh, regardless uh, how much work we do? Or is it um, just the accumulated uh, number of work that the roads has uh, endured that determines the service life? Maybe it's also a combination of um, loads and uh, environment. For example, if you have uh, water, moisture on the road, that could uh, influence the service life by water pumping through the, the pavements. The next questions uh, that you um, probably have is that uh, uh, why did these uh, road sections come to the end of the service life? Why did the road authorities or the manager decide that it has to be overlaid or replaced? In other words, what was the distress modes for the different road sections? Was it rutting, raveling, wear, cracks, and what type of cracks in that case? Unevenness, maybe poor friction. This kind of information is very uh, important and crucial for your interpretation of these data. And what I have seen, it's very difficult to find these kind of data. You have to go to experts to ask them what is the typical um, distress modes that um, is causing the end of service lives for a particular type of uh, road material. I think it would be uh, most beneficial if uh, the um, the stress modes and, and the reason why, why we replace um, road sections with new material is um, recorded so that it can be interpreted in um, statistical uh, analysis. Okay, the stress mode is not everything. Uh, you have also have to understand the mechanism um, for the distress. Uh, for example, if it's raveling, um, is it due to poor adhesion between the aggregate and the mastics, or is it um, fretting of the um, um, mortar that caused the raveling? Could also be freeze thaw cycles that is uh, uh, comes into play here. And this was a very long introduction to say, sorry, I have to <clears throat> move more because uh, of the light. Mm. This is a very long introduction to, um, to say that you have to understand the problem that you would like to fix before you can fix it. So the, uh, uh, the ultimate um, approach to determine or improve the service life is to understand uh, the distress mode and the failure mechanism that you would like to address. To summarize here, what I've been talking about is that durability is not uh, a material property. It's the combination of the material, the traffic, environmental factors like the water, uh, freeze or cycles, uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation, oxygen and aging, and could also be um, um, as, a, as a result of uh, poor bearing capacity uh, of the road. And the more you know about um, the roads that you are looking at or the materials uh, you are looking at, the more uh, targeted approach you can use in the durability assessment. To summarize the distress modes, uh, we have wear in Nordic countries, we have raveling and fretting, uh, we have um, loss of friction due to loss of uh, microtexture, 
we can have rutting, fatigue cracking, and temperature cracking as well. So the distress modes uh, could be different for the same type of material, depending on which country you have, have these materials. You will not expect to have temperature crackings in, in Holland, but maybe we'll have it in, in Sweden, at least in some parts of, of Sweden. And the friction is uh, not very often a problem because we have a wear uh, of the surfaces in, in Sweden, but that is a big problem in parts of Europe. So now I will just mention a few of the uh, test methods that you can use uh, in the durability assessment. And uh, oddly, I will start with stiffness measurements uh, because uh, whatever uh, type of distress and what type of material you are, are looking at, you would like to keep track of the stiffness modulus because um, the surface course uh, adds to the bearing capacity of the road and, and uh, it protects the other layers beneath it. It could also give you some indication if um, you will have some um, problems at the low temperature range or in, in the high temperature range. Secondly, um, my next favorite is uh, to have a look at the shear properties of the material. Uh, this is uh, important if you have um, expecting um, rutting deformation in, in, the, in the material. If you have a large temperature variation in, in, in your country, um, you will probably have uh, days with a very hot weather and um, that could um, um, be very crucial for your um, service lives. So this is a setup that we can use to determine the shear modulus and uh, calculate the complex viscosity and further uh, calculate the deformation that we get depending on the load spectrum that we have on the road. Uh, in some cases, uh, fatigue cracking uh, could be of importance. And uh, I'll just show you one way of uh, measuring um, um, fatigue properties. There are several and uh, there are good things uh, about all types of uh, setups. Uh, I like this one very much because it is simple and uh, not very expensive. Uh, in many cases, uh, you have um, problems with um, the durability because of um, water. Uh, and a favorite of mine here is to use the um, mist equipment to simulate the dynamic pore pressure increase that you have uh, when traffic um, passes over uh, moist um, pavements. There are several um, uh, test methods to, to look at the moisture sensitivity, but uh, this one is particularly um, interesting because it's uh, related to both traffic and, and um, the moisture content. Uh, I don't have a, a slide on aging. Um, aging is uh, of course very important. Uh, uh, oxidation of the binder um, could uh, have a dramatic influence on the materials. And um, you can uh, simulate aging by by um, by having your loose mix in in ovens at uh, uh, moderately high temperatures for for some days. The less your, you know, 
Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Could you please wrap up in a couple of minutes? Absolutely. Uh, the less you know uh, about uh, uh, the durability of the system, uh, the more comprehensive tests you have to use. Uh, one way is to use accelerated load tests. And, and in this uh, uh, project, we use the uh, accelerated load test we have in uh, VTI, a circular road simulator. And here we can uh, both um, simulate the traffic, but also the different um, environmental conditions like uh, dry and wet conditions, free soil cycles, uh, new and artificially aged material. We can use soft underlayers to simulate cracking or to induce cracking. And we measure texture, rutting, friction, and uh, raveling, of course. To summarize, um, you should know something about the stress mode before you start making a durability assessment or, or durability um, uh, improvement. Um, look at the environment. Uh, in your country, what traffic you have, structure, properties of your, the road, the climate you are in, and um, that includes then moisture, freeze, or cycles, temperature range, all that uh, affects the uh, failure, prop, uh, failure mechanism. And uh, the more you know about the additive or synergistic effects, uh, um, the, the better, and you can use targeted tests. Otherwise, the less you know about the, the new material you're looking at, the more comprehensive tests you need to, know, to do. And you have to use the reference materials to compare with. And um, <clears throat> that was um, the last um, of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bjorn. So this is what uh, we are keep on developing from LCM. I have to say that this is a, uh, the work package who are, uh, you know, we are working on it in this moment. So many results will come at a later stage. Uh, but Bjorn introduced well what we are going to do. So Bjorn, we have a question for you. And uh, is uh, Maria Tarazanova was asking whether these studies are published and if there is a correlated asphalt functionality and maybe failure in real condition with the asphalt mix design, so composition, characteristics, and or material properties, like characteristics of the PMB, which polymer elasticities and so on. And so is there this type of correlation between uh, the data you you showed and the relation and the property of the of the mixture. Uh, I think um, you have to look at the specific uh, environment that um, your material is going to be used in to to assess if there's a if it's important. But I think uh, maybe you're asking if it's a um, a general correlation between a certain test and, and, and the durability service life uh, in general. Uh, I'm not really sure about um, the question. What we can do, Bjorn, is that uh, I'm going to send you the question and yes. uh, you can also you. A chat with the, with the person. Also, this will allow us to go a little bit of on a coffee break, so we mm -hmm. run a I little bit to do that because we are a bit late, and I would propose to have a coffee break, maybe ten minutes. Exactly, exactly. We come back at forty, Brescia. Is that okay? Yes. Forty past okay. three European time. We put a message on the screen. Thanks, Bjorn. Enjoy your break. Bye.